Hey y'all, Coach Nafai here, talking about the sacred calendar. And in this class, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the sacred calendar. We're going to look in the book of Enoch, which is the only scriptural document that tells you how the sacred calendar works. And we're going to see how it is that we're supposed to reckon our years, our months, and our days. We're going to be talking about how we are supposed to reckon the Sabbath days. In other words, how do we know when the Sabbath days are? And then we're also going to look at those four seasonal days that's often overlooked. Those four extra days that make up the 364 day year. We'll be using a picture of a sundial to tell you how we're supposed to know when those days are. And we're also going to be looking at some of the other channels and the calendars that they produce, particularly Leland Jones and Nick Vanderlane. And we're going to compare their calendars to the Book of Enoch and its description of the sacred calendar. So there will be a lot of information in this video and you may need to watch it twice because I plan to go through this as quickly as I can. And what you're going to find is information on the sacred calendar is vital to the righteous walk. So you very much so need to know how that calendar works. So go ahead and hit that like button. Be prepared to leave a comment as we go. And let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is the history of calendars. Because most of you watching this video are only familiar with what's known as the Gregorian calendar. This is the calendar that we have on our walls that tells us when we are to go to work, go to church, or go to school. The Gregorian calendar is a solar dating system used by most of the world. It's named after Pope Gregory III, who in 1582 declared this calendar, the Gregorian calendar, as the calendar for the Christian church. You see here at wikipedia.com that the Gregorian calendar was the replacement for the Julian calendar. Now, those two calendars were very similar, both having 365.25 days in it. But when you study on as to the reason why Gregory needed to change the calendar, you will find that that need was surrounded by the date of Easter. In other words, the Julian calendar didn't get his date for Easter correct, so he had to change the calendar so that the date of Easter will fall precisely on the day in which he needed it to. So up until the 16th century, most of the civilized world was using the Julian calendar, so let's look at it. We're still in Wikipedia.com, now looking at the Julian calendar, the predecessor to the Gregorian calendar, and we see that it was proposed by Julius Caesar in 45 BC. It was 45 years before the birth of Christ that the Romans, with the aid of Greek mathematicians and astrologers, decided to create a man-made calendar. Now, when we come to the history of calendars, also on Wikipedia.com, we see that the predecessors to the Julian calendar were lunar solar calendars, which we're going to find out is what the sacred calendar is. A lunar solar calendar means that it takes into account both the position of the sun and the position of the moon in order to determine the day and the month. So, in other words, the Julian calendar was the first man-made calendar that stopped using the Father's sacred system of timekeeping. It was Julius Caesar that decided not to follow the father's timepieces, which are the sun, the moon, and the stars, as we read in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, and decided to use a different type of calendar system based on mathematics and astrology. So think about that for a second. Up until 45 BC, 45 years before the birth of Christ, Almost every calendar system on the planet used the sun and the moon to determine the days and the months. But then Julius Caesar, who was already in persecution of the Jews, rejected their biblical way of determining time, decided to create a man-made calendar 
which was in effect until the time of King Gregory, who slightly modified that calendar so that his date for Easter would be correct. And that is the calendar that we go by, a man-made calendar that includes days of the week like Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. This we learned at the website called worldslastchance.com as the Pagan Planetary Week. And when you go on to read that website, which is all about how Constantine and the president of the Sanhedrin at the time named Halal II changed the calendars. It was Constantine who is known as the father of the Catholic Church who wanted to marginalize the Jews did so by forbidding them to use the sacred calendar and forced them to use an entirely different type of calendar system. You read here that it was in 321 AD that Constantine adopted that pagan planetary week as the method for keeping time. If you read between the lines you see that it was in 321 AD that Constantine made it so that the Christians would use the pagan planetary week as their calendar. In other words, all of a sudden there became days like Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday on the calendar. So if you think about that for a second, those days were not even part of the calendar when the Messiah was crucified. So when somebody says that he was resurrected on Sunday, you should understand that Sunday did not exist at the time. There was no day known as Sunday at all. And it was only in the year 321, after Constantine declared himself the head of the church, did anybody who claimed to know the Son of God or the Father in general would have ever considered using such a calendar system. While we're on this website, let me come back to the very first paragraph, which says one of the greatest frauds in the history of the world was perpetrated almost 1700 years ago by the actions of two men. The Roman Emperor Constantine committed a pretentious act. He unified his empire by promoting Sunday as the day of Yehoshua's resurrection and outlawed the use of the biblical calendar for calculating Passover. So this is actually what happened to the sacred calendar and why many don't use it today is because of the actions of the Roman Emperor Constantine who actually outlawed it. That was why he was killing the Hebrews and the Jews was to stop them from celebrating the Feast of Passover on the correct date. In other words, people died for the calendar system. And you think about it at the time. Nobody had a Bible in their house like they do today. The only scripture was kept by the priests and the common man didn't have access to it. But they did have access to the feast days and the Sabbath day, which we learn is a sign between us and the father. So keeping the feast days was actually the most important thing. And that explains why Constantine, who is the father of the harlot church, killed those who were actually trying to calculate the feast days according to the father's sacred calendar. It goes on to say this set in motion a series of reactions. Jewish leader Hillel II responded to the persecution following this legislation by a modification of the biblical calendar. In other words Hillel II who was the president of the Sanhedrin at the time working to appease Constantine, who was the emperor of Rome, modified the father's sacred calendar. In other words, he changed it. He took it upon himself to change the sacred calendar and this is what the Jewish community goes by today. This is why in some years, like in the year 2021, in the year 2013, they actually celebrate feast days a month too early. This modification seems similar to the sacred calendar, but we're going to find out here in a second, has one significant difference that throws it off and makes it a man-made calendar. So, in other words, the Jewish calendar, 
the calendar that the Jewish people go by is a man-made calendar it's not the sacred calendar at all it is the creation of the man named Hallel II who was appeasing the Roman Emperor Constantine but let me go on it says this supplanted the true Sabbath with the pagan Saturday and this is why some people actually consider Saturday as the Sabbath day to this day it was this Hallel II who declared Saturday as the Sabbath day and the reason why he did so we're gonna find here in a second is that by modifying the calendar the way he did he actually lost the correct Sabbath day this modification that he performed made it so that they would not know when the correct Sabbath day was then this Jewish community turned to Talmudic law which is not the Bible the Talmud is not the Bible it's only people writing about the Bible so it is full of leaven they turned to the Talmud which told them that if they didn't know the correct Sabbath day then they could choose any day that they wanted as the Sabbath day so they chose Saturday so this is why the people who reject Sunday as the Sabbath day follow Saturday as the Sabbath day but both Saturday and Sunday are pagan days on a pagan calendar and have nothing to do with the sacred calendar there are no Sundays and there are no Saturdays on the sacred calendar whatsoever in fact we're gonna find out here that the sacred calendar doesn't work like this at all and there's no way to determine exactly what day the Sabbath day falls on a pagan calendar because the true Sabbath day we're gonna learn here is determined by the moon and since the new moon doesn't fall on the same day of the planetary week every month the Sabbath day seems to change from one day to the other for example the last lunation the Sabbath day fell on Thursdays but with the new moon appearing on June the 11th the new Sabbath day will be on Saturdays but when we have the next new moon the Sabbath day will probably change to Sundays and that's because the lunation or the lunar cycle has 29.5 days in it but we'll come back to that what I really wanted you to understand is how all calendars started off as sacred calendars even in the days of Babylon they were using the lunar solar system it was only during Julius Caesar's time that man transitioned from the father's sacred timepieces the Sun the moon and the stars and decided to create his own calendar that's not at all dependent on the position of the Sun the moon or the stars so now let's go in and let's study this so-called lunar solar calendar now the first thing that we see when we look at the lunar solar calendar on Wikipedia is that its dates are indicated by the moon phase and the time of the solar year in other words you have to have the position of the Sun and the position of the moon in order to know what the correct day is that's what our father was talking about over in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14 when it says let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the days from the nights and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years it was our father's intention to use the lights of the firmament for us to be able to tell time so here we understand that Julius Caesar was actually in error for creating a man-made calendar by doing so he made it impossible to know when the correct seasons and days and years would fall but now when we come to the book of Jubilees and chapter 6 we can see how much trouble this caused for our father's people it's talking about observance of the sacred calendar but if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment then they will disturb all of their seasons and the years will be dislodged from this order and they will neglect their ordinances so what this is telling us 
is that if we don't follow the sacred calendar, then we won't know what year it is and we won't know what season it is and we will neglect the ordinances. Verse 34 says, and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the paths of years and will forget the new moons, the seasons and Sabbaths, and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. And this is precisely where humanity is right now. As a whole, we don't know what year it is. We don't pay attention to the new moon days and the, the significance of them. You look at the Jewish community in the year 2021 and they're celebrating feast days in the wrong season. It's because we've gotten away from the calendar that is talking about. And like we talked about earlier, they're celebrating Sabbaths on the wrong day. This is the result of neglecting the calendar as described. So let's jump back up to verse 32 where we're hearing about the main element of this sacred calendar. It says, And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. So this is what it boils down to. This is what Hillel 2 modified when they called the Jewish calendar a fixed calendar. This was his modification. No longer does the Jewish calendar follow this 364 day cycle. You've never heard a Jewish person ever talk about the calendar having 364 days in it. That's the main modification that Hillel II did to appease Constantine when he took out the 364 day element to the sacred calendar Constantine was happy because of what would happen next like we saw in verse 32 by neglecting the 364 days they would disturb the seasons and the years and the ordinances in other words by neglecting the 364 days you wouldn't have to worry about the father's people being able to celebrate the feast days on the correct day and they wouldn't even know when the sabbath day was and they would start to neglect all of those ordinances just like we're doing today people arguing whether Saturday is the correct Sabbath day or Sunday is the correct Sabbath day when both of them are actually wrong but anyway looking back at verse 32 this is our father commanding the children of Israel that they observe the years according to the reckoning of 364 days and by doing so it says that they will know the correct Sabbath days the correct years and the correct feast days so what is this 364 days how do you have a calendar that only has 364 days in it now to understand where Moses who wrote the book of Jubilees is getting the idea from these 364 days we have to go back to the book of Enoch the book of Enoch not only was the first document ever written here on the planet but it also includes the Elohim's account of the sacred calendar and how the celestials all work up there. In other words, it's this book that tells us how the Father's timepiece works. The sun, moon, and the stars, we learn about all of their respective periods in what he calls the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. This is the only scriptural document that we have that tells us how the sacred calendar works these few chapters are the authority on the calendar any deviation from what you read in these scriptures in regards to the calendar is not a sacred calendar at all that what you create that's different from what you'll read here is only a man-made calendar and will eventually cause you to start keeping the feast days on the wrong day like it did for Halal 2 and the Jewish world but if you follow these instructions to understand the sacred calendar you'll see in verse 42 
the 364 days that Moses was talking about. And when you look closely here, you see precisely when the 364th day is. It's the day in which the night and the day becomes equal. The 364th day is the day of the spring equinox. The significance of the 364th day is a calibration day. With this information, every year we understand that the day in which the night and the days are equal is the last day of the sacred year. Now, this may seem odd that the Father would include a calibration day. Why would he mandate a 364 day year when empirical evidence showed us that the year is actually 365 days? Well, it is because the earth has a procession and rotates on its axis in a period of about 26,000 years. Meaning that if you had a fixed calendar like the Gregorian calendar and the Jewish calendar, it would eventually get out of sync. And like we read over in the book of Jubilees, your seasons and your years will become dislodged. In other words, unless you keep updating the calendar, you will eventually be celebrating summertime in the month of December and you will be celebrating wintertime in July. So that's what the 364th day does is it resets the sacred calendar every year. The equinox is the date and time at which the sun crosses the celestial equator. And it is on that day that the days and the nights are approximately equal. Now, just as an aside note, the equal lux seems to be similar to the equal nox and is the exact date in which the days and the nights are equal. But the problem with the equal lux is that it varies depending on your latitude and you need a computer in order to determine when it falls. So if you follow the equilux, your months will start on different days than people who are on a different latitude than you are. And since it requires a computer, you know that that's not what they were doing back in the days. They didn't have computers. We see from the book of 2 Kings chapter 20 and Isaiah chapter 38, they had sundials in order to tell the season. So in ancient time, in order for them to know when the year started, they used a sundial to track the 364th day, which calibrated their calendar every year. But now that is the last day of the year. So if we scroll back up, we can see the first day of the year. When you're looking at these verses in chapter 71, it tells us the precise time that the sun transitioned through these gates or these portals and how long it stays in each one of these portals. That's what these lines are representing on this sundial. All they had to do was look at where the shadow was being cast to know which season they were in. So when we come back to verse 9, we see when the beginning of the year is and that is when the sun enters the fourth portal or the fourth gate and again we know this date because it is the date after the equinox or the date after the days and the nights are equal which is around the equinox but notice right here how in the definition of equinox that there are actually two equinoxes in a year one in September and one in March that's two times in a year in which the days and the nights are equal. So which one is Enoch talking about? We can tell that he's talking about the spring equinox in verse 13 when he says during that period, talking about the 30 days that the sun is in the fourth gate, during that period, the day is lengthened from the day and the night curtailed from the night 30 days. We know this is the spring because the days are getting longer than the nights. During the fall equinox, the nights are getting longer than the days. So that's how we know that he's talking about the spring equinox. 
being the head of the year. This is what Father was telling Moses over in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 2 when he says, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. It is because while the children were in Egypt, they stopped paying attention to the Father's feast days and his sacred calendar. So they didn't know what day it was or what month it was. Just like humanity doesn't know today because they have stopped following the sacred calendar. And that's why you see so many people surprised when you come and you tell them that the first month of the year falls after the spring equinox. Well, good thing it wasn't so hard to convince Moses as it is to convince some of the religious leaders of today. And now would be a good time to talk about the barley harvest. Like we said, people have gotten away from the scripture. And the barley harvest is actually one way that they do so. Instead of looking to the scripture to see how the calendar works, some people look to beavers and barley in order to know what day it is. Well, let's look in the scripture right quick and let's see if we're supposed to actually do it that way. Now, we're here in the Bible and we're looking for the word barley. And the first time we see the word barley is in the book of Exodus chapter 9 and verse 31. This is when the plagues were coming down on Pharaoh back there during the days of Moses. Well, notice that verse 31 says, And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in ear, and the flax was bold. Now, this one verse is why there are so many people that actually talk about barley harvest every year. If you don't believe it, let's look and see when the next time we see the word barley. It's up there in Leviticus chapter 27, which by now we've already heard the beginning of the year back there in Exodus chapter 12. But here in verse 16, it's talking about the price of barley. When it says a homer of barley seeds shall be valued at 50 shekels of silver. And the next time we see the word barley is in the book of Numbers chapter 5. When it's talking about the offering of jealousy that is to be made, which includes a ephah of barley meal. So the first three times that we see the word barley has nothing to do with timekeeping or a calendar in any such way. And if we continued on, we'd see that the scripture never talks about barley in relationship to a calendar. And that error will become pronounced in the sabbatical years and in the jubilee years in which there is no planting of the barley whatsoever. So the two most important years, which are back to back, the Sabbath and the jubilee years, those who are dependent on the barley we have no way of knowing when the season is, when the year starts, and when they should be keeping the feast days. So, if the first element of the Father's calendar that we learned today was that it has 364 days in it, the second thing that we learned is the first day of the solar year starts on the day after the spring equinox. And this is where the Jewish calendar fails you because it is a fixed calendar and does not consider the 364th day calibration period. Some years, like in the year 2021, that calendar was off by a month and has people celebrating their feast days a month too early in the wrong season. When I come in and I put in Rosh Kadesh Nisan, or the new moon of the first month, according to the Jewish calendar, or the Hebrew calendar as they're calling it here, it says that the first day of the first month was on March the 13th in the year 2021. But when you look at when the spring equinox was, you see that it was on or before March the 20th. So the Jewish calendar declared the first month of the year before the spring equinox. So those who rely on that calendar celebrated the spring festivals a month too early. 
2021 should have had a 13th month. This is the result of Hillel 2 fixing, or should I say changing, the sacred calendar to his own man-made creation. Just like Moses said in the book of Jubilees, because we've gotten away from the 364th day system, we've lost track of the seasons, and so now we don't know when the correct feast days are. All right, so now let's come over and let's look at one of the popular calendars that you'll find on the internet. This one we're getting from the channel called Leland Jones, but even though he makes it sound like it is his creation, you can see other people with this same creation on their channels for you to download. So let's look at this calendar and let's see if it matches up to its namesake. You see here that he calls it an Enoch calendar. And when you hear him talk about it, he says Enoch says this or Enoch says that. But never does he actually show you the verses where Enoch supports his calendar for timekeeping. And you'll see that common in the other calendars that we use. They just claim that Enoch said so and so, but they never will prove it. But anyway, we're looking here and he has that this is the year 6110 slash 2021. And what he says in the video is that we are in the year 6110 since the creation of Adam. But if you know your eschatology, you know there's a problem with that because the day of the Lord or the millennial age was supposed to start at year 6000 or at the beginning of the seventh day. So according to Leland Jones, the day of the Lord is at least 110 years late. And we know that not to be the case. What's actually going on here is what Moses said in the book of Jubilees. He's actually lost track of the year. And let's look at his calendar and let's see how. Now, the first thing you'll notice about his calendar is that it starts on March the 17th which seems like a random day until you listen to him speak where he tells you that his calendar starts on March the 17th because it is a Wednesday. According to people who create this type of calendar, they believe that every year starts on a Wednesday. Now, they're getting this idea that every year starts on the fourth day from Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 through 19 which says that our father created the lights in the firmament on the fourth day so as juvenile as it sound they're actually looking at Sunday as the first day of the week and saying that since our father created the Sun and the moon on the fourth day then every year must start on a Wednesday but we've already established that they created the planetary week, that week that has days like Wednesday and Sunday in it, after the Julian calendar was in effect in 45 AD. So prior to 45 AD, days like Wednesday and Sunday didn't exist. So there's no way that our father was thinking of those pagan days or even the pagan calendar when he was creating the sun, the moon, and the stars. So even though Leland is calling this an Enoch calendar, it doesn't follow the verses of Enoch at all. Remember that the Enoch calendar has a calibration day. The 364th day falls on the date that the days and the nights are equal. And we've already established that in the year 2021, that's around March the 20th. But here he is starting his calendar on March the 17th. So in that way, it does not fit the Enoch model at all. And then notice that he has six day weeks here. Now, I've never heard of a calendar with six days in a week. But what you see when you look closely is that it's counting each one of these months as having 30 days in it. The first month he says has 30 days. The second month he says has 30 days. 
and then you see there that the third month he says has 31 days and he claims that Enoch states that this is the way the months work but when you come back to Enoch chapter 71 you see that he never said that a month has 30 days in it what Leland and others are getting that from is what you see down in verse 12 where it says that the sun remains in the fourth portal for 30 days and then in verse 15 you see that it goes from the fourth to the fifth portal or the fifth gate where it remains there for another 30 days and then in verse 17 you see that after the fifth gate it goes into the sixth gate where it remains there for 31 days so sure Enoch is saying that the sun goes through these portals 30 30 and 31 days but notice the word month is actually missing from all of this never does he say that this is talking about a month he's only talking about the position of the sun what that is referring to is the shadow that's been cast on the sundial as the sun transitions from one portal to the next it is not talking about the month but only the gate in which the sun is in at the time and when you look closer at what Enoch says about the month and do a simple search you see that he used the word month in verse 1 of chapter 71 when he was talking about what he was taught and then you see him mention the word month down in verse 9 when he's talking about the first month of the year and the sun entering the fourth gate but then you see that he doesn't mention the word month anywhere else in chapter 71 so while he's talking about the 30 30 and 31 days he's not actually talking about a month at all it's in chapter 72 which is the chapter about the moon that he's talking about the month you see there in verse 3 verse 5 and verse 8 when he's telling us that the new month starts with the new moon so once again Leland is calling it an Enoch calendar but yet we haven't seen it follow any principles taught in the book of Enoch so this calendar even though it's cute is not actually an Enoch calendar at all it is yet another man-made creation and those who follow this calendar will have celebrated the feast days on the wrong day and looking here where he has the new moon listed here on about April the 11th you see that it is playing no role on his calendar at all I know for sure that it's not a loony solar calendar because the moon other than serving as a placeholder here has no effect on the calendar so let's look at how the moon is supposed to play a role in the calendar now let's come back over to the book of Enoch because like we said the father's calendar the sacred calendar is a loony solar calendar and we've only been talking about the position of the Sun to determine the year so now let's look at how the position of the moon determines the month now the first thing we see related to that is in verse 11 out of chapter 71 of the book of Enoch when it says and in the fourth gate through which the Sun with the moon proceeds in the first part of it so we know from verse 9 that we're talking about the first month and what verse 11 is telling us is that first month is when both the Sun and the moon proceeds through the fourth portal that's how we know that the Jewish fixed calendar is wrong for the year 2021 the Jewish calendar is wrong because it declared the first day of the first month before the Sun entered the fourth portal in other words the Sun didn't arrive into the fourth portal until about March the 20th but by then they had already declared the first month to have started back on March the 13th this is the result of Hillel's two modification that's what he modified that's what he changed 
and that's why the Jewish calendar is wrong and that is why they're celebrating their feast days in the wrong season so we understand that the sacred calendar has 364 days in it we understand that it is a lunar solar calendar which means that it depends on both the moon and the Sun and we know that the beginning of the solar year starts after the spring equinox and we know that the first month begins when both the Sun and the moon are in the fourth gate so let's look at how we reckon the month now so we look in chapter 72 which is all about the moon whereas chapter 71 of the book of Enoch was explaining the course of the Sun it is in chapter 72 that we start to hear about the inferior luminary named the moon now for most it's really easy for us to understand how the lunar cycle works it begins and ends with the new moon Enoch explains this in verse 5 when he says at the time it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month 30 days it is with the Sun in the gate from which the Sun goes forth in other words what it is saying here is that the beginning of the month is when the moon appears talking about that sliver of the moon that appears right after the new moon that's how we know when the, the month starts when that sliver appears now I give you links to this book so you can check out some of these verses for yourself because if you've ever listened to somebody tell you wrong it's going to be more difficult for you to erase those mistruths and go with what Enoch is telling you here which is that the month begins with the new moon see how in verse 6 it's saying that it starts off with 0% of this light illuminated and then on the date of the new moon or the date of the first month it receives a seventh portion of its light that's the sliver that is talking about that appears at the beginning of the month that's the new moon now I spend a little bit of extra time here because there is a sect of people out there who want to celebrate the beginning of the month on the full moon instead of the new moon they're quick to jump down in the comment section of these videos and talk about how the full moon is the head of the month the scripture they use to support their era is Psalms chapter 81 and verse 3 which says in the King James Version blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time of the appointed feast on the solemn feast days by choosing an inferior translation like the New International Version which says sound the ram's horn at the new moon and when the moon is full on the day of the festival they try to say that the new moon is the full moon now if they would only dig a little deeper they would find the error that they make in simply by going to the interlinear Hebrew version of that same scripture you see that the scripture states the full moon as well as the new moon but notice the Strong's numbers are different when you look up the Strong's number for full moon it's H3677 which is Kise and means full moon and when you look at the times that Kise is used the New American Standard Version says full moon the KJV says time appointed and the Biblos Interlinear Bible says the full day of our feast now when it comes to the full moon there's only one other time that it's mentioned in the Bible and that's over in the book of Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 20 when again the King James Version says day appointed and the New American Standard says full moon but look at what we find when we look at Strong's number H2320 which is Kodesh it means new moon but it also means a month and we see that that word is used 283 times in the Bible and most of the time like in Exodus 34 and 18 it's talking about a month 
And we also see Kodesh in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 2, which we referenced earlier, when it says, This month shall be the beginning. It's saying, This Kodesh shall be the beginning of months for us. And the word Kodesh comes from new moon. So it is clear that the new moon is the head of the month, not the full moon. But we can come back over to Enoch and confirm this when in verse 6 he says in the 14th day, talking about the lunation, on the 14th day of the lunation, the whole of its light is completed. In other words, 14 days after the new moon is when you will have a full moon. The full moon falls on the 14th day of the month, not the first day of the month. And verse 7 is saying the same thing, talking about the full moon. So what this is saying is that the head of the month is when the moon appears. And this part of the Jewish calendar remains the same. That's why they declared the first month of the year to be March the 12th, which was right after the new moon appeared. The Jewish calendar will get that part right. But because they don't know the head of the year, their seasons are still wrong. And if you follow that Jewish calendar, you will have your seasons wrong in the year 2021, as well as in the year 2026 and or the year 2029. This is why it's important to understand how the calendar works for yourself. Else, you're going to rely on the Jewish fixed calendar and some years you will be celebrating the feast days in the wrong year and most months you will be celebrating the Sabbath day on the wrong day. Now let me be real plain here when I'm talking about the Jewish calendar or the Hebrew calendar. Most years you could actually follow the Jewish calendar and you would be keeping the feast days in the correct year but because it doesn't follow the calibration period the Jewish calendar will show its error when its feast days will drift by a month. So now let's come over to another popular calendar that you'll find on the internet. This version we'll get from the YouTube channel Nick Vandalane. And it too takes on the name of the Enoch calendar. So let's go in and look at his calendar and see if it follows the rules of Enoch or not. Now, the first thing we'll notice about his calendar is that it starts the new month on March the 21st, which, according to Google, is the day after the spring equinox. But you quickly notice, like the calendar we saw at Leland Jones, this calendar does not take into account the position of the moon at all. In fact, when you listen to Nick talk about this calendar, he calls it the Enoch solar calendar. The problem with that is that there is no such thing as a Enoch solar calendar. The Enoch calendar, as we saw from the book of Enoch, is a loony solar calendar, which means that it has to take into account the phase of the moon in order to determine the months. And doing a quick search for the word moon on his document here, I see that the only time the word moon is mentioned is down in his footnotes in a sentence that says, the day following the spring equinox is the first day of the first month and resets the fourth day of the week, the day Elohim made the sun, moon, stars, and timepiece. So not only is he neglecting the moon to reckon the days of his calendar, but you see here that he is also using the logic that Leland did. And that is that our father created the sun, moon and the stars according to the pagan calendar and the planetary week. And this is slightly different from what Leland has in his calendar because Nick has interpreted that that the Sabbath day falls on Wednesday. So whereas Leland chose Saturday as the Sabbath day, Nick is choosing Wednesday as the Sabbath day. Both are in error 
because like we said before there are no Wednesdays and no Saturdays on the Father's sacred calendar those are pagan days on a pagan calendar those are the days of what they call the pagan planetary week but you clearly see here that Nick has the Sabbath day falling on Wednesday in March and Wednesday in April and May 26th which is also a Wednesday and June the 30th which is also a Wednesday and you also see that he too has his months 30 30 and 31 days like Leland does as they are wrongly interpreting Enoch as saying that each month has 30 30 and 31 days now while we're talking about these 30 30 and 31 days which represents the season let's come over and let's talk about this element of the calendar and the first place we're going to look is in Jubilees chapter 6 again but this time we're going to look at verse 23 where it says on the new moon of the first month and on the new moon of the fourth month and on the new moon of the seventh month and on the new moon of the tenth month are days of remembrance and the days of the seasons and four divisions of the year this is talking about four special days on the calendar that we are supposed to remember each season this is talking about the seasonal days and once again we could come back to the book of Enoch to see what these days represent all of the information about our father's calendar can be found in this book of the revolution of the luminaries out of the book of Enoch so we're going to look in chapter 81 of the book of Enoch and we're going to drop down to verse 6 which says respecting these men greatly err and do not compute them in the computation of the age this as you see back in verse 5 is talking about the four seasonal days that we are to remember every year or every season verse 6 again says but indeed these are marked down forever one in the first gate one in the third gate one in the fourth gate and one in the sixth so this points us back to the sundial and those different regions that the shadow will be cast as the sun enters different gates the way that works is when you're looking at your sundial and you see the shadow being cast in the first gate or in the fourth gate the third or the sixth gate you'll then start looking out for the new moon that falls while the sun is in that particular gate and you re remember that day that day is the date of remembrance that's talked about over in the book of Jubilees this was what Enoch was talking about in chapter 71 when he was talking about the Sun being in the particular gates for 30 30 and 31 days those 30 30 and 31 days equal 91 days and one season so after that 31st day we'll have a day of remembrance on the new moon day so when you hear somebody talk about the months having 30 30 and 31 days that's not what Enoch was talking about but he was talking about the days of remembrance and the seasonal days that occur every 91 days these extra four days these days of remembrance plus the 360 days are what make up the 364 days solar cycle you see down in verse 11 that is talking about the conductors of these four seasons and in verse 12 it actually names the angels over these four seasons so we have to include those on the calendar next let's talk about the timing of that 24 hour period that we know as the day again notice how all of this information about the calendar is in one central location the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven this is the authority on the father's calendar and no other book goes as far as explaining what the calendar looks like except this particular book of Enoch and when we look down in verse 2 out of this chapter we see it explaining that the 24 hour period that we know as the day starts at sunset 
You see that in verse 2 when it's talking about the first law of the luminaries. The first law of the luminaries is that the sun sets. Not that it rises, but that it sets. You see, it says the sun and the light arrives at the gates of heaven. And we've been talking about those gates this whole video. So the sun and his light go through these gates that we have been talking about. But the first law of the luminary says that the sun and its light arrive at the western gates of heaven, which means that the first law of the luminary is that the sun sets. And we see this also restated in a different way down in verse 8. When it starts to describe the sun, as you see there in verse 7, talking about its chariot where it ascends and the wind blows. This book gives us spiritual definitions of how the celestials work and how they are carried about with these spiritual winds. But notice that in verse 8, it says the sun sets in heaven, returning by the north. So just like in verse 2. The first thing that we learn about the sun, the first law of the luminaries is that the sun sets and then it returns by the north and proceeds towards the east when it rises. Now, this all makes sense that the day starts at sunset when you realize that darkness always comes before light. Even when our father was creating the universe, he was surrounded by darkness first. Darkness always comes first and then comes the light. So the dark part of the day comes before the light part of the day. You can see other scriptural proof of this when you come over to the book of Nehemiah chapter 13 and read verses 19 through 22. When you find that the king who was protecting the community against merchants who was wanting to buy and sell stuff on the Sabbath day closed the gates before the Sabbath day started. And when you look at verse 9, it says, And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath day. In other words, the Sabbath day was about to start as the sun went down. That's because every day starts when the sun goes down. Now, we've done video after video on this because it's important to understand when the day starts, else you will be getting the days wrong. For instance, the new moon day which is always verified right after sunset. Well, if you believe that the day starts in the evening time, which is correct, when you see the sliver of the moon appear in the western sky, you know that the new moon day or the first day of the month has just started and will last 24 hours and end on the following evening. But if you incorrectly think that the day starts at sunrise, and you are there verifying the new moon in the evening time, then you would be led to believe that you have actually missed the new moon day because you are at the end part of the day after the sun has already set, but the new month had actually started 12 hours earlier that morning at sunrise. Essentially, you will miss every new moon day of the year and you will get the Sabbath days wrong and you will get the feast days wrong because like when you look over here in Leviticus 23, the feast days like the Sabbath days and every other day of the year starts in the evening time. You see that when you're talking about Passover in verse 5 where it starts at the evening of the 14th day of the month and you see that also talked about down in verse 32 when it tells you the Day of Atonement starts at the evening also. So the feast days start in the evening. So with the feast days starting in the evening, even if you didn't have Enoch and scriptural proof that every day starts in the evening, how confusing would it be if other days didn't start in the evening? No, all of the scripture points to the fact that the day starts in the evening time the day starts at sunset and for one more element of proof I'll show you just a few of the scriptures that show you how 
the evening is the beginning of the day and also the time in which we have a spiritual reset. We see that when it's talking about uncleanliness and how it doesn't matter when you became unclean and it doesn't matter when you actually washed your flesh to become cleansed again. We see in verse after verse that you have to wait until sunset before you become clean again. It's because sunset starts a brand new day. So let's go on. And with that, let's see how the Sabbath days are to work. Now, first of all, let me bring you back over to the book of Jubilees in chapter 5. And let me bring you down to verse 30 to confirm that the new moon is actually the first day of the month. Now, I can do so by comparing verse 30, which says, On the new moon of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains were seen. And on the new moon of the first month, the earth was visible. Now, notice here that it says new moon, the new moon of the tenth month. But now when we look at the same account from the book of Genesis, which was also written by Moses, we see that it says, and the waters decrease continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen. So we're here, we're talking about the 10th month. This is during the story of Noah when the water was decreasing. It was in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, that the tops of the mountains were seen. But Moses wrote in Jubilees that it was on the new moon of the 10th month that the tops of the mountains were seen. So with these two verses, we can see that the new moon is the first day of the month. And when you come over to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 46, we see that the new moon is not a work day, but it is actually a day of worship. It says that in verse 1 and in verse 3, that we shall worship at the door of the gate before the Lord on the Sabbath days and on the new moon days. So when you're looking at the sacred month, the first day of the month is considered new moon day and a worship day and the second day of the month is actually the first work day so the eighth day of the month is the sabbath day as well as the 15th the 22nd and the 29th now Hillel too knew this back there when he was changing the calendar we see back over here at worldslastchance.com when talking about Hillel too it says he transferred the observance of the ancient Sabbaths from the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th days of the lunar month to every Saturday on the Julian months. This is why non-Christians celebrate the Sabbath day on Saturday. It wasn't our father that changed the Sabbath day to Saturday from Sunday. The Sabbath day was never on Sunday or Saturday. It was Constantine who changed the Christian Sabbath day to a Sunday and Hillel too chose Saturday. But neither one are scripturally accurate. There are no Sundays or Saturdays on the Father's sacred calendar. Those are pagan days on a pagan calendar. So how does this all work? The first day of the year is the first new moon that falls after the spring equinox and is the day known as new moon day the day after that would be the first work day of the month and seven days later we will have the sabbath day and notice that the sabbath day falls on the same day of the planetary week as the new moon day in other words if the new moon falls on saturday then the Sabbath day will be on Saturday as well. But if the new moon falls on Tuesday, then the Sabbath days will be on Tuesday. So anybody who says that the Sabbath day is Sunday or that their Sabbath day is Saturday every month is living according to a man-made calendar and is not following the Father's sacred calendar at all. And when we come back to Jubilees chapter 6 and see in verse 35 that these people who are following these man-made calendars will have forgotten the Feast of the Covenant 
and are now walking according to the feast of the Gentiles. So these people who have not learned the sacred calendar and or have not learned to follow the sacred calendar are walking according to the feast of the Gentiles and that's why they're not keeping the feast of the Lord. These same people that will tell you that the Sabbath day is Saturday or Sunday will quickly turn around and tell you that you have no need to keep the feast of Passover or unleavened bread. And this is why, because they have neglected the Father's calendar and are now walking according to the strong delusion of the Gentile church. So out of all of this, the one thing we should have learned is that we need to stop relying on American idols and their man-made calendars. Think about it. The Jewish calendar, which is very similar to the sacred calendar, has been around for over a thousand years, but you have never seen one printed out. And the reason why is because of the lunar cycle and how you have to verify the new moon before you can declare a new month. So it is like our father never wanted us to depend on people in order for us to know what day it was. He wanted us only to depend on his timepieces, which are the sun, the moon and the stars. So learn how to verify the new moon for yourself or get your Levite, the firstborn in your family, active in verifying the new moon and help them learn how it is that they're supposed to remind you of the new moon and the Sabbath days as well as the feast days and the days of remembrance every month. That's the number one job of the Levite. And for future generations, consider getting a sundial because the internet is not going to be around for forever and the primitive methods of telling time will one day be all that we'll have. I guess that is another reason why our father with his infinite wisdom never wanted us depending on YouTubers and their Excel spreadsheets to provide us with calendars. So go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Leave us a comment if you have any questions or anything and hit that like button if you will. Send a message to YouTube that you prefer the truth and they'll help get this information out to other people.